Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kilohertz and welcome to another video in my Project CLS 63 AMG series. In today's episode, I've actually got four updates for you, which are new front and rear H&R spacers, new AMG front discs, new tires all around, and finally, a vinyl strip to cover the chrome on the boot lid. Just before I continue, I need to let you know that there may be the odd one or two inconsistencies in some of the video footage in this video. Reason being, is I've filmed a lot of this over the previous year and now I'm only just putting it together now. Anyway, on with the video. So I'm going to start with my new front brake discs that have just been fitted. Now these bad boys came in at an eye-watering £575 each from Mercedes themselves. I did have a good look around online and virtually all seemed to come in around this price so I may as well just go OEM. Now one thing that makes the cost a little bit easier to bear is that when I first got the car I did negotiate nearly a grand off the price when I bought it. Now one of the reasons for this is that I knew the discs were original and would need replacing soon. Lucky for me though the rears had already been replaced before I purchased the car. Take a look here at the size and depth of the groove on the brand new disc and compare this with the state of the old ones. Now recently when I've been driving along I've been experiencing some vibration in the steering wheel upon hard braking and also when I was driving around at motorway speeds and above, a result of the ageing rotors, so they did need to be changed. Any of you guys have any suggestions as to what I can do with the old brake discs? I was thinking maybe a wall clock or something like that, but they do weigh at least 5 kilos each, that's way too heavy. Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, back to the main modification within this video. I've just purchased a full set of H&R hub centric spacers. Now that's one centimeter for the front and two centimeter for the rear. H&R, a German manufacturer of race components, these aren't your usual eBay special cheapo versions. As you can see here, they're high quality milled, complete with laser etchings along the side. Additionally, these are TUV approved and TUV is basically Germany's annual road safety test, which is one of the strictest in the world. Now with spaces, whatever you do, don't buy the cheap, unbranded versions. Get the most expensive version you can afford to ensure that they're the safest possible for your car. If you're not aware of the difference between hub-centric and non-hub-centric, hub-centric, in a nutshell, are designed to carry the weight of the wheel on the hub rather than actually on the bolts, which is safer. With it sitting in place, you can clearly see here where the wheel will mount onto, with the central tube, if you like to call it, what the wheel will slot into. And of course, with any spacer set up, you also need to buy the corresponding bolts to go with them. Here, H&R also include the one centimeter longer bolts within the kit. Now note that the original Mercedes bolts are the rusty ones, classic Mercedes. Now again, it's vitally important that you don't cut any corners and buy cheap versions of bolts. Now cheap bolts are generally have really soft or weak metal and are prone to snapping or threading themselves within the hub assembly. So let's now move around to the rear wheels. Now the spaces on the back will make the largest, most visible difference. In this shot you can clearly see that in stock form the wheels are sitting well within the wheel arches and there's definitely a noticeable lip over the tyres from the bodywork. Now the extra 2cm on each side, which the spaces will provide, will definitely be more noticeable and will give the car a wider stance as they'll soon make the wheels sit flush in line against the bodywork. Now with the rear wheel off, you can clearly see that the rear disc is in good condition and there's still plenty enough depth on the little groove. Luckily I don't need to replace these. Here's the 2cm rear spacer. Now unfortunately they didn't have the black version in stock when I bought these to match the front, so instead I opted for the silver version. Not that they're easily visible once they're on the car anyway. 
All the marks, the copper and grease and so on, are due to them being fitted on the car for nearly a year now, when I film this actual clip. And just like the front spacers, these ones you can clearly see are well made and high quality. And not to forget that they supplied the rear bolts as well. And you can clearly see here that they're two centimeters longer. And as I mentioned at the very start of this video, I've also had four new tires fitted all around. Now I've gone for Pirelli P0s. I have heard of some good reviews of them. I'll see how I get on. My choice is actually fairly limited for the rears, being that they're 255 35s. The car previously had a set of Zondas, no, nothing to do with Pagani, which although were pretty poor in the wet and a budget tyre, did last well for over 18 months since I had owned the car. They were fitted brand new by the previous owner when I got the car. Right, so now on to the final modification of this episode. My CLS, like most models, has a lot of chrome bright work across the body. Now a lot of owners are removing all the chrome, especially on the front grille, and replacing it with black vinyl to give the car a kind of stealthy look, or what it's commonly known as murdered out. I can't say I'm a real fan of this myself. On this CLS for example, the chrome around the window gives the car its coupe silhouette shape. By removing this, it takes away one of the car's unique features which differentiates it from other cars such as the E-Cast for example. Having said that, I actually think the total opposite of this model's boot lid. Now this generation came with a horizontal chrome line across the rear, which overall I think kind of softens the car's look, especially from a distance. So I've purchased myself a roll of black gloss vinyl wrap and I've cut it down to size. I'm going to give it a go and apply this myself. I don't think it can be that difficult, surely. And as what you can see here, is nearly a perfect match. Fifteen minutes or so later, here we go. Armed with my trusty hairdryer to soften the vinyl, and don't use a heat gun as it will melt it in seconds. The vinyl slowly becomes more malleable and starts taking shape. The key is to take your time. Now a while later I'm starting to get the hang of this. It's starting to look exactly what I'm after. Minus of course the odd air bubble. Now the key with any modification like this is to prepare the bodywork thoroughly by cleaning it beforehand and overall taking my time. And as you can see here, starting to look pretty good. Apart from the air bubbles, I'll use a squeegee to press these out. If you'd be interested in me making a how-to video on how to wrap this, let me know in the comments below. So this next shot here was actually taken over six months later. As you can see, it's pretty holding up pretty well. The odd couple of air bubbles have started to come through again, and also you may see the odd little chip where the chrome's coming through. But considering it's been on the car for getting on for over six months now, it's not looking too bad. And if it gets too bad, I can just simply replace it again. A roll of black vinyl gloss wrap is so cheap, especially on places like eBay now. If this does mess up, I can just keep replacing it for really cheap, time and time again. And it's such an effective mod in my opinion, it really transforms the back of the car and makes it look a lot more aggressive and kind of more, more AMG like. So here she is with all these modifications complete. Now first up we've got the new um, boots all the way around, Pirelli P0s, filling out the arches really nicely. And then not forgetting the new AMG front discs with their eye-watering price. And then of course the front and rear H&R spacers. Now you can just about see it here, just nestled in between the actual um, hub and the wheel. 
hardly noticeable whatsoever once the wheels well, once it's all bolted back up again and then of course if we make our way around to the rear where the actual spaces are a lot more noticeable and with the silver just visible there and they really do fill out the rear arches making the car look a lot more aggressive as you can see in this side profile and of course on the other side as well they line up perfectly with the bodywork now you can't really go any further than two centimeters because then it starts to protrude past the bodywork which is illegal in most countries This is such a simple mod and relatively cheap. I think it's about £100 for the front and again for the rear. That's definitely worth doing. It really transforms the look and stance of the car. Now, I think overall the car is starting to look pretty decent now. Let me know what you think in the comments. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to see others like it, please click on the links here and here to see the previous episodes. And if you haven't done already, make sure you click on the subscribe button here to make sure you're updated whenever I upload any new videos. Until next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.